Kipper, congratulations, number one. What do you think the emotions are going to be like tomorrow night when you see number 34 raised to the rafters? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's going to be tough. You know, it's uh, it's a great honor, and I know it's uh, they're going to have some great show there and uh, see the jersey go up there. So, yeah, I try not to cry, but we'll see. <laughs> do you feel a little more comfortable in front of the media right now than you did back in the day? Yeah, yeah, it's uh, you know, it's uh, now we have to do it. Iki, Iki and Gani, they are somewhere gone now, walking there. So, uh, yeah, ah, it's good to see you all for sure. Do you have the speech done? Oh yeah, it's 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 there. Is it longer than your Finnish Hockey Hall of Fame speech? Uh, yeah, it's gonna be a little longer for sure. But I did bring noodles here for for the funny and long one. <laughs> <laughs> There must be so many memories in this building. What is it like walking in here? Yeah, it's great to be back. You know, it's uh, seeing people still, same people working in the building and uh, see the players. And uh, yeah, it brings back the memories and uh, fun to be back here. What's the, what's the biggest memory that stands out for you in your time here? It's a hard question, you know, it's uh, we can always say like 04 run and everything, but uh, I have so many good memories, you know, it's uh, it's kind of hard to pick one, but uh, yeah, many, many good memories for sure. Okay, on that old cup run, within that run, what do you, what, what was your, what do you look back on? Oh, sorry? In that Stanley Cup run, what, what, what fond memories do you look back on? Well, you know, I, I did get traded like that year here and uh, you know, it was a great team. I noticed right away, you know, it's uh, it was a uh, room was full of great guys, not just great players. And, uh, you know, for me, it was like second chance there. And, uh, you know, uh, things start really, uh, uh, started going well. And uh, so for me, whole year was unbelievable. And of course, whole run too. So it's, uh, it was unbelievable. How would, you, how would you describe your performances from that run? Just looking back at some of the games that you played, the numbers that you posted, you, you were in a zone. How would you describe that feeling? Yeah, you know, it's a uh, it's playoff run. So uh, I had some some games I played unreal and helped team. And then it was other other ways too. You know, it, our team played unreal defense like whole year too. And they really made me look good too. So uh, it, it worked both, both ways. I never got a chance. To, you, know, you, you left and we never saw you again. And I was wondering, why you didn't want to extend your career to go to Toronto at the end? Did you just feel like your career had run its course? Yeah, it was it was a tough year, and at that moment when I kind of have to decide what to do, and uh, I figured like if you if my head is not hundred percent there, it's it's not worth it. You know, it's it's not right for anybody to go like half. So uh, I felt uh, that was it, and I was done. Once you retired, you were happy with the decision you made. Yeah, I was. Yeah, of course, it's uh, always tough when you when you're done. Yeah, and it takes some time to time to uh, get back. You know, uh, life without hockey. But yeah, uh, I'm happy with my decision. Coming back to Calgary, okay. coming back to Calgary, I'm sure you bumped into some fans or walked to certain familiar places for you back in your time. Did you have any interactions, and if so, what were they like with fans, with people at restaurants, etc.? Uh, they're all good. Like uh, that's why I liked Calgary always. You know, even when I played here, it's there's a lot of fans, but people are respectful. You know, they they say hi or congrats, and uh, that's that's how it's been. You know, it's a uh, lot of lot of people walking by and they're just happy for me. And uh, yeah. Was it like seeing some of your? Teammates here, and, and uh, you know, they had the luncheon today and stuff. Great stories, and, and what's it been like for you, seeing all of them? Oh, it's great. We we met here last night, first time, and uh, went for dinner. And uh, yeah, it's so great to see them. Like I always think, like I should come back more often because it's always good times and great to see the boys. And you know, uh, I I think I I'm gonna come back next time uh, a little faster than five years yeah. <laughs> yeah how many of the stories that were told today are true <laughs> well you know it's always stories there's some truth in there at least but uh <laughs> but uh you know stories change and they grow and everything but yeah good stories for sure now, how often do you reflect on on that 04 run mika how often do you think about it these days 
Uh, not too often. Like it's, uh, you know, it's uh, hard to say. Of course, you see highlights and uh, stuff. Like if, if you watch hockey game or when I watch playoff series now, like NHL playoffs, then then sometimes you comes back to back to my mind. What's it like to see so many of your old friends working for the for the club now? Oh, it's great. It's uh, it's funny actually. You know, Connie, he's uh, he's a smart hockey guy, and uh, and Iggy is a great great guy with him there. I I love to go and listen to their conversations for sure. Have you been tempted to Have you been tempted to look into a job in hockey? Or are you happy with what you're doing now? I'm happy right now what I'm doing. Like I enjoy time home with my kids, and uh, you know if. I don't want to do job like 50 percent, and I know if I take ho- job from hockey, it's going to take lots of time to be good at what you're doing. So, right now, I'm enjoying my time with family. And do you look at uh, your relationship with the media? Did, did you not like doing it? Were you shy about doing it? How would you characterize it? Yeah, I, I did enjoy that. I, I think we had better players to do it, and uh, but I, I. I knew it like it's media is a big part of the uh, game, and uh, I think uh, media always treated me like respectfully. I, I did never had anything against media, but uh, I think it was other players who gave better stories for you guys. And we always wondered every year after the exit interviews, we'd have all the exits covered with photographers, and you'd still find a way to sneak out of the building. Can you, <laughs> can you reveal how you did it? I can't. I was talking with Depo and he said, you can't tell it. He might have to use it some other time. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Can you, 20 years ago, a little more than 20 years ago, when you were traded here, how, how do you remember that day now? Well, you know, I was in San Jose and uh, I knew I was going to get traded. Like it's, that was the, their plan. I went to training camp and uh, for me, it took a little longer. I was waiting. Like I was just training hard because I knew like, if they trade it, if they, I gonna get other chance, and I have to be ready. Like I, I have to, and so came here. It was, uh, you know, I was excited. Like I, I talked with the Daryl, and he's like, "You gonna get if you play well, you gonna get games." Like it's, so you better be ready. And uh, for me, it was unreal, new chance, and uh, work out well. In the playoff run, I mean, the city embraced this team and that that group of players so intensely. And I was across the country, and I remember thinking it looked crazy. What was it like being in sort of right in the middle of that and just seeing a city go crazy for for what was happening? Yeah, it was it was fun. Of course, we we couldn't join that much. We had we had job to do there. But uh, like I say, it's uh, great fans. You know, they are supporting us, and uh, they know how to have fun too. And uh, yeah, it was unreal though. Uh, the whole city was so great for us. How did it Robin feel being here? I was talking to Robin Regeer, and he told me a story about you wearing a wetsuit for the practice the day before the outdoor game to stay warm. Did you wear a wetsuit under your goal equipment? I did. I tried it, and uh, <laughs> it was good. I, I didn't wear it in the game, but I used it next summer for water skiing. So it was, <laughs> it was good, though, yeah. yeah. How did it feel being so close to the Stanley Cup. We know you had the opportunity to win in Game 6, and then there was a Game 7 to play. How did it feel being in those moments? Oh, it's a tough moment. You know, you're a player, and uh, that's what you want. And uh, still still hurts a little bit. You know, I'm, I'm proud for that run, but uh, it's uh, yeah, that's one memory. It's still good memory, but it's hurting a little bit, for sure. Do you remember anything about in, in Game 6 where it looked as if Marty Jelena might have scored a goal? But Yeah, yeah. I know I I should say it was in because it was in, but uh, <laughs> yeah, actually I uh, I I haven't watched those games since like I, I never never watched any of those final games. Okay, your all your former teammates talk about you never <coughs> wanted to be the guy in the spotlight. If you wanted it to be all about the team. How how are you handling this weekend? That's all about you as an individual. Yeah, it's uh, it's weird for me. Of course, it's uh, I uh, like. Give me speeches or talk with you today. I, I never felt that comfortable, but uh, it's again, it's part of the thing, and it's you know, it's so great week, and it's been so fun so far. So uh, I, I'll do it. And uh, actually, today upstairs we we were talking up, and it it wasn't that bad actually. It was fun. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, big time. Good to see you back, Randy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs>
Now, did you know that you were born in the year of the dragon? Oh yeah, I did, actually. Happens to be this year. Oh, is it? Yeah, I know and that. Your full circle. Uh, I mean, uh, 20 years ago or now, uh, we look at a lot more diverse Calgary city, a lot more kids from different parts of the world. Any piece of advice for kids to or parents to kind of grow the game locally, especially you get more, you know, BIPOC players, young kids getting involved in hockey in the future? So tip for the parents, what to do with the kids. Oh yeah, just let kids enjoy. Don't push them hard. Let them love the game. That's it. You got, got, you guys don't play as much as you used to play. I think UC Saros played 67 games uh, a few years ago. That's the most recently. Like, you played 76 back to back all the time. Could you still, A, could you still play 76 if you were in the league right now? And uh, if you know, what was the secret to being able to play that much? Yeah, I, I probably couldn't play that much. And, uh, you know, I like to play a lot, but it's, uh, uh, but we had plans those seasons. We had plans me to play less, but uh, you know when team is fighting for the playoffs, but you need the wins, and uh, so it's pretty easy to change those two. And you know, uh, so uh, we plan. I play a little less, but uh, end up play seventy, whatever it was. And uh, so I enjoy it, but uh, I think ideal would be a little less. How did you like seeing your picture on a can of beer? Oh, that's big honor for sure. Yeah, <laughs> no, uh, yeah, it's cool actually. I saw it and I think it looks good. Yeah. Do you watch a lot of hockey these days, Mika? Or uh, you know, usually when I wake up, I check out the scores, any of the scores, and uh, maybe see the highlights. And if there is some uh, big game, then I, I watch it. But I follow, but I, I'm not every day watching every game I can find. Yeah. Do you guys there's going to be a lot of fans out there. We're going to have fond memories of you playing. Down the road, they're going to see a number 34 years and years ahead. They may have not known you, but they'll see that 34 up there in the rafters. Is there a message that you want to convey in terms of who you were and who you are as a person that you want to leave as a, la or as a lasting legacy? Tough one. Yeah, I don't know, but to answer that, it's... Uh you know, I, who I am, I think I'm, I'm a team guy. So me, it's like even it's my jersey going up there. I think it's our team's time. It's not just my moment tomorrow. It's uh, for the guys who I played with and, uh, you know, helped me out a lot. So I guess team guy, that's who I want to be remembered. David Marcoux told me a story that uh, your first year here when you got injured, uh, I think uh, someone fell on you in Minnesota. You ended up being able to skate, so you just learn how to stick handle better. It, again, is that story true? And what was the motivation behind sort of staying on the ice and learning that that part of the game? Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, you know, I remember when I get hurt and usually you can, if you can't skate, you always can work something. And uh, puck handling wasn't my best thing when I came here, but I I think I improved a lot. I, you know, I work, I work with the Ds pretty much every day, every practice and we, we did simple things. Like I, I, I wasn't goalie who gonna score, but uh, you know, help help the D's play, uh, make their their game easier, and uh, just make simple moves. So that's what I work a lot. Is there is there a goalie right now in today's NHL, Mika, that reminds you of yourself? Or? Oh, goalie. Yeah. I know. I met those Flames goalies a couple of days ago, and I, I was watching up like they are huge, <laughs> huge guys. I I felt like uh, game is changed, and uh, so I don't know. Maybe some some younger, uh, smaller goalies, but yeah, to, nowadays they are big and fast and flexible, so it's uh, fun to watch them. You know, Markstrom talked about how he kind of looked up to you when he was a kid. That's a kid from Sweden looking up to a Finnish goaltender. Could you have ever imagined that? Oh, that sounds great. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, I I played in Sweden three years in my life. I was there and uh, enjoyed every moment. So. I have not, nothing against Swedes. I was curious, because uh, I know, obviously, you may have not necessarily been on the same team, but perhaps crossed paths, because Mike Vernon has his name up there. He was briefly with the San Jose Sharks, and I believe you were with the AHL affiliate. Did you ever cross paths maybe during camp? And oh, we did. What, and what were some of the messages he said to you? Actually, it was funny. Uh, he's, uh, I remember when I went to Sharks camp, and I didn't know too much about like who's 
Sark's players. I knew Mike Vernon gonna be there, and uh, so I tried to watch him. We we didn't skate same group, I think once, but uh, I was watching what what is he doing? Like why is why is he so good? But uh, one thing he said to me, we were stretching after one practice, and uh, he told me there, and my first training was, it's keeper. I know you want my job, but I'm gonna take Kohli good job. <laughs> and Kohli, he didn't like that Kohli good was. He didn't like that joke for sure. <laughs> yeah. You mentioned the size of goalies today. If you were still able to play, say you're at your peak, you're able to play in this era, how would you adjust to playing in this era where so many other goalies are, are a lot bigger and are able to cover the net? Yeah, I, I think you can still play. Like, I know it's a lot of big goalies, but like, it's still the same job to stop the buck, yeah, and it's, it's simple. So I, I think if you are smaller, you just have to move a little more and uh, make sure you're like, uh, moving quicker than those big boys, but 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 for sure there's big goalies there. Going back to you, you mentioned uh, you, the plan wasn't for you to play as much as you did, but you did. What what enabled you to play that much and uh, be effective? You know, it's uh, when you play a lot. For me, it was like it's just like hard, like manage, like because you want to practice too to stay in top of your game, and then you need to rest. So it was always kind of balancing there. But uh, I did get routine what to do, like what is good for my body and my head to do it. And uh, it was just a uh, routine. So when you let in a goal, you were famous for flipping up your mask, having a sip of water, and it looked like nothing had bothered you at all. Did it drive you crazy when they scored on you, or were you really not bothered by it? Uh, I wasn't that bothered, you know. You know how many goals I let in in my car. Like it's, it wasn't like one, so uh, you get used to it, yeah. But uh, yeah, uh, you know, sometimes, of course, you know, if you, if I let in really easy one, that's that was tough. But most of the time, you know, like you just have to stop the next one, and uh, you know, you can't say change it anymore. So, yeah. How did you learn that? I mean, most guys it drives them nuts. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's just part of me. I am and uh, I, I think that helped me a lot.